As you may have noticed, we haven't made a video in a long time, and that's because we have been hard at work developing a game called Predator Isle. But what is Predator Isle? Well, before getting into what the game is about, let me talk about some backstory. We are a team of three, well actually a team of two, because the third guy barely does anything. Looking at you Jimbo, I know you're watching this video. But anyways, a while ago the three of us would play survival games together. We played Minecraft Survival, but the endgame was kinda boring. We played Ark Survival, but we kept getting destroyed by bozos of dragons we couldn't do anything about. We also played Rust, which I'm not gonna say what the problem with it is, since anyone who knows what Rust is like, knows exactly what the problem is. But we also started getting into game developing at this point, deciding what game engine to choose before coming across the Godot game engine, or Godoot, or Godaddy, I still don't know how to pronounce it. And after fiddling around with it, and learning how to actually make games with it, we start talking about what game we should make. We want to make a survival game since, you know, we played a lot of survival games together. Our first idea was a small multiplayer game called Island of the Wolves, where you have to survive on a small island full of wolves for as long as you can. And as the days go by, the wolf spawns will get higher and higher, until you and your friends get run over by wolves. This idea was created two years ago, and since then we've gotten way better at game developing, and we expanded our idea for what the game would be like. So recently, we actually started to work on Island of the Wolves, or Predator Isle, as we call it now. I actually made a light version for the game, and it's really fun, so I can imagine how fun the real version of the game with multiplayer would be like. Predator Isle is a game where you and your friends spawn on a procedurally generated island, with procedurally generated caves and abandoned structures, faced against a dangerous environment. Each day you survive on the island, the animals become more and more formidable. Your goal is to survive as long as possible before the animals become too jacked and overwhelm you and your friends. You can choose between a short game which would take an average of 30 minutes, or a long game which would last up to a week. We are also planning on adding matchmaking with up to 20 other survivors, with either PvE where everyone on the island works together to fight off the environment, or PvP where the environment won't be the only thing out to get you. There will also be a specialized voice chat with proximity, so you can talk to other players. We are adding other game modes as well, such as Escape, where you have to escape the island, and Final Survivor, where it's essentially a battle royale between your team and the other players. We are also implementing a persistent mode, where you join a server that has a series of massive islands, and all progress you make is saved. When you die, you respawn, creating an open world survival game, similar to Ark Survival or Rust but not like Rust, where the time to kill is like 0.5 seconds. Sorry, I, I was playing Rust the other day. But now let me talk about what will be on the island. There will be basic animals, biomes, resources, and equipment. But my favorite part is the caves. Not the caves themselves, but what will be lurking in them. I'm a bit of a troll, so I told my team we should add giant creepy cave monsters in the caves, who are somewhat uncommon and make extremely quiet footstep sounds so you don't know if there's a monster in the cave or not, just for a horror aspect. Just imagine mining in a cave and freaking out, wondering if there's a monster behind the shadows or not. Everything I mentioned is huge, and unfortunately, we don't have a huge team. And we're all just a bunch of broke teenagers committed to making a dream game, so we had to cut a ton of these features out for the demo version. Once the demo is done, we will add these features we dreamed about as updates. Now, what did we have to cut out for the demo? Well, as you can imagine, a lot. We cut out the procedural terrain and procedural caves, so for the demo it will just be a static island. We won't have too many animals like we planned on having, only around 14. And yes, we will include the cave monster for the demo because it's too funny imagining miners freaking out while mining. We won't have persistent mode or escape mode or battle royale or matchmaking or a specialized voice chat or week-long survival games. We cut out about 80% of the items we were planning on having. For the demo, it will just be you and your friends spawning on an island, and the goal is to survive as long as possible on an island full of deadly predators, as they get stronger each day. Once you spawn in, at first the island is peaceful with a few run-ins with some small predators, but by night, the animal spawn rate becomes 5 times as much, so you and your friends build a survival hut to hide from the predators. 
Once day two arrives, the animal spawn rate becomes slightly higher, the animals become slightly stronger, and stronger predators can start spawning. The island is no longer a peaceful paradise. You have to get resources, get better weapons, and get better base defenses before the animals get too strong. One great way to get resources is from caves, but you you know. But what happens when one of your teammates die? And how does the game end? Well, the game is endless and goes on until everyone dies. When your teammate dies, we thought it would be absolutely hilarious for them to get flipped into a coffin and dragged underground. And the way to save your teammate is by digging them out with a shovel. One of my favorite items we're gonna have in the game is a long sleeve t-shirt which was inspired from Rust. Hopefully, we can have a description as colorful and descriptive as the one they have in Rust. But frankly, I don't think anyone can make a description better than this. We have already made significant progress, and I'd say the demo is well over halfway done. Currently, we have all the animals imported into Godot with sounds and animations. The animations I made myself in Blender because I'm jacked. We have gun scenes ready and animated. We have a bunch of multiplayer architecture complete, an inventory and container system set up. We have crafting, equipping, player synchronization and all that stuff set up. It seems like we have most of everything done though. What's left? Well, a lot. We may have gotten most of the big things done, but there's still a ton of tiny things left before the game is complete. We need first person hand animations for every item. Player animations for every item. We need to get the animal AI set up. Make the animal attack, behavior, and spawn logic. Sound effects for literally everything. An actual player model and not a blue robot. A main game screen where you can host a game or connect to a game. Environmental objects like trees and rocks. Different biomes on the island. Caves, a day night cycle, player respawn systems, so when your teammates die you can revive them. And, uh, I, I can't recall anything else, but there's probably a lot more left to be added. Now let's talk about our main struggles with this project, since I know you guys enjoy seeing me suffer. One of the main issues we have is optimization. Why are we having optimization issues? Well, that's because we didn't watch how to optimize your game. Great video, you should watch it. But the real reason we have optimization issues is because for some reason, if you have a bunch of multiplayer synchronizers in the scene, it lags. Why does it lag? No idea, it's just Godot being funny. And we have to use multiplayer synchronizers and spawners for every environmental object. Right now, there are only 1000 environmental objects in total on this island with the multiplayer nodes. And the server is under 20 frames per second. Because of this, we're gonna have to create our own multiplayer synchronization system, which will take four hours times 10. Now, luckily, I'm not the one who's gonna be struggling with this, since the other person in the team will be working on this. Fortunately for you guys, I'm gonna be struggling with animating the first person hands. But unfortunately for you guys, I watched this fantastic, amazing, wonderful video on how to animate, so I won't struggle as much. You should watch it as well. With all that being said, when will the demo be completed and available for release? We estimate it'll take around 1-3 to three months before the demo is complete. But no promises. The demo itself is a huge game for our small team. But if I manage to finish Predator Isle Light myself, then I know we can get this game done. One of our goals for this game is to prove that Godot is a serious and powerful engine. Because one of the biggest red flags most people have about Godot is that there aren't enough well-known games made in it. Help us reach this goal and prove the power of the Godot game engine by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. But anyways, that'll be all for this video. More videos coming soon, so subscribe! Or else we'll bring back the Mr. Brast AI voice.